The new school year also means the return of after school activities, and it is so easy for you and your kids to quickly become overcommitted. So joining us today to help us keep our schedule reasonable is UAB psychologist Dr. Josh Claypo. Dr. Josh, I know a lot of parents struggle with this. I yes. have a lot of things I have to sign my setup for. Yes, we haven't done anything yet. Good. So I'm starting in a good position, right? You are. Okay. And we all have good intentions. We yeah. really do. But I mean, a lot of times we end up creating what I, I'm calling overscheduled syndrome. I mean, the kids will actually exhibit symptoms of being too overscheduled, Morgan. I mean, you'll see things like headaches and stomach aches, a child may be nervous, they may be irritated, problems sleeping, those kinds of things, or that while they're maybe doing okay in school or their activity, they're working twice as hard to do that. Mm -hmm. And if you think about it, we have great intentions. That's not, that's not what's supposed to be happening is driving your child to work harder at something that's supposed to be enriching. So are we talking about elementary age kids or middle school or high school? What's the focus here? Well, I, it starts as young as, as elementary. Okay. Uh, and sometimes, you know, well, let's just say elementary. It starts as, and it goes, <laughs> and it seems to get worse and worse and worse and worse mm -hmm. until a point usually with teenagers where they will stop the activity themselves, mm -hmm. but it goes, it's the whole range. And, and part of the reason that it happens is we don't think about it. We don't think about what we need to do. And so really today's tips are about kind of setting some guardrails. Okay, so how do we know, you said something about stomach aches, headaches, feeling overwhelmed. How do we know that our kids are dealing with that? Well, A, they may talk about it. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, obviously it could be some sort of illness. It can be something else. But I think what you have to do is you have to butt that up against, what have I got them doing? And so that's where the rules are so important. And, and the number one thing is you have to have as a parent the ground rules. Is it going to be one activity every semester? Is it going to be two activities? Is it going to be three? You have to set the ground rule before you start talking to your child about what they want to participate in. And you as a parent should know like what they're capable of being able to do. Absolutely. And that's really the second part, particularly with young kids. They want to do everything because yeah. everything sounds so much fun. Right. So you need to educate your child about being, it's fun, but they're also going to have to practice and it's going to, they may have to stay up later and giving them, you're not taking them away from the fun, but you're really giving them a realistic view. The other thing is I see more parents whose whole life is to and from activity, to yeah. and from, if you are doing that, your physical and mental well-being is suffering, mm -hmm. you're not being the best parent you can be, even though you're doing it for your child. It's like you're just trying to keep up with everyone else. And you that cannot is not do that. Huge, that. That's a whole other segment that we need to do. Last one is the litmus test, which is there are seven days in a week. Mm -hmm. You as a family, whatever the family unit is, should be able to have dinner one night a week. If you can't, with a few exceptions, if you can't, then you are overscheduled. And I promise you, you are doing yourself and your children more harm than good. I think a lot of people are going to be reevaluating their schedules after hearing this. <laughs> Dr. Josh, as always, we appreciate you being here, and we'll see you next week. Thanks, Mark. We're on your side.